Hello, welcome to We Are Your Them channel. I'm me. <laughs> and today we're going to go over one part of a Congress person's uh, testimony, I guess is what you'd call it. And it's from Forbes Breaking News. And the, t and the title of the video is called Just In Gender, Confirm Gender Confirmation Surgery for Minors Debated in Congress, I believe is what it's going to say. Very real. The efforts to cover up what's being done to our children are extreme. And the science is on the side. House. We all know. The House Judiciary Committee. Down is morally and ethically right. I look forward to the testimony from our witnesses as we unravel the narrative surrounding the so-called gender affirming care. I now recognize the ranking member, the gentlewoman from Pennsylvania, Ms. Scanlon, for her opening statement. Ms. Scanlon from Thank Pennsylvania. You, Mr. Chairman, let's be clear. Let's Congress be. Congress has no business interfering in parents' freedom to make decisions about appropriate medical care for their children. I disagree. Uh, the government steps in all the time, tells us what's appropriate care for our children. The idea that politicians are more qualified to judge the medical value or necessity of gender-affirming care than every major medical organization is absurd. All the major medical organizations are woke. They're all pushing gender affirmation for your child. If your child so much breathes they like something from the opposite sex, they'll be changing them. Uh, you know, my son has been dealing with an ear issue for five years. We've gone from doctor to doctor to doctor. And uh, the last doctor we went to finally said maybe we could try this procedure. Well, the insurance denied it. They had no problem saying we can tell him what to do. I actually have to go to hearings. I have to go to hearings for medical care for my special needs son because the government wants to say what they'll pay for for him to have. And that's another thing. This isn't just parents paying out of pocket for all this stuff. It's all coming out of taxpayer dollars. And there's another group in Oregon with very severely special needs kids. They're having to fight, fight the government so that the parents can even stay home and take care of their own kids. The state will pay some stranger, some guy off the street, they'll pay him to come take care of your kid, but they won't let you quit your job and just pay you. But they're pushing gender-affirming surgeries down everybody's throat like it's the next best thing. What is wrong with these people? Holding a hearing to substitute far-right ideologies for parental judgment exposes the rank hypocrisy of the party claiming to value individual freedom and individual freedom that means we want the freedom to raise our children and make our own choices and we do not want the schools encouraging it if your child truly has gender dysphoria then i agree you know they need to be helped with whatever because that's uh n not natural and not normal government and so here we are before the subcommittee on the constitution and limited government make no mistake today's hearing is not about protecting children or parents rights it's a well let's make the one thing straight for my videos my videos are 100 percent about keeping children safe and protecting their parents from gaslighting and bullying by doctors and governments and states they'll come take your kids They'll take them away. A cynical and frankly dangerous political attack on transgender children and their families, driven not by science. What about the political attack on parents? We don't want this. The parents that do want this, something's wrong. You do not want your child mutilated for any reason. Even if your child has a life-threatening you know, disorder and they need an operation, you're going to worry yourself sick. You're not going to walk in there all sunshines and ice cream and rainbows and say, yeah, cut my child's piece off, please. He's a girl. What is wrong with these people? Answer facts. But by polling and political strategists determined to mobilize conservative voters through fear. I used to be a liberal, more liberal voter. Not now. Not now. I'm going all Republican. I'm voting Republican up and down that ticket. It's, it's about 
protecting the children at this point. And, you know, I'll be with Republicans for everything. If they want to uh, make abortions illegal, then that's just the way it's going to have to be for now to protect society. So let's start by setting the record straight. Gender-affirming care is safe and effective. It is supported by every major medical association. They're all in on it. Medical schools are run by Big Pharma. All these medical places have so much to make off of this. Uh, I was thinking about that doctor I had on my video a few back. And uh, Kyla. And uh, she says, oh, she doesn't make more money. This is just the same she would make if she worked at any job. Um, and I don't know about that because on the other show that I watched, I don't even remember. I watched so many shows. They said that the surgeons are making a lot of money. Now, I don't know, but I can tell you 100% that Big Pharma, they're going to make a lot of money. Uh, hospitals with metal equipment, all that stuff. All those people are going to make money. Of course, they're going to say yes. They were, they're trying to earn enough money to protect their future family from whatever miladies might lay us, you know, might wait for us. You know, they want their their family taken care of. It's all about money. I just, uh, I, uh, I Googled about uh, stocks the other day. I'll have to get that and I'll pop it up on the screen. Just look how much they expect it to grow in the next few years. Yeah, all, all those people in these medical associations are all in it for the money. I believe that. I do not believe. Why is the American Pediatrics Association, why are they pushing this for children? Why? They're destroying our country from within. They're going to make everybody weak. Including the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, the American Medical Association, and the American Academy of Pediatrics, among others, representing over 1.3 million American doctors. It's just not up for debate. The it is up for debate because those doctors, well, there was a doctor on Buck Angel. She's from Oregon, and she's one of the few that can speak. She's an actual doctor trying to warn people. I feel sorry for you parents that are pushing your kids and going along with it. You're going to be you're going to be settled down with them for the rest of your lives or since they have a dead name, they really will be dead to you and you'll never see them again. In any case, it doesn't work out for anybody good for their family. It just doesn't. Partisans who characterize gender affirming care as radical gender ideology it is. are just repeating right wing talking points to delegitimize critical health care. Access to gender-affirming care is essential to the mental health and well-being of trans youth. This care is tailored to both the mental and physical health needs of patients, as well as their developmental stage in life. I don't think putting children on bob puberty blockers at nine years old for the next four or five years, however long they do it, I do not think that is well child care. I do not. And the parents and guardians of these children are involved in every phase of decision. No, they're not. That's a lie. Because uh, the children in Oregon, at 15 years old, they can go do whatever they want. They don't have to tell their parents anything. Making. There's nothing radical about that. Go watch a, uh, a male-to-female surgery. Oh, go watch a... I watched another one last night. It was... Uh, they didn't get a the um adedictomy they uh they just got on the hormones and their parts they had enlarged and then they cut a bunch of muscles it was quite disgusting i can't imagine any parent wanting that done to their child for kicks and giggles to make them feel better how many pain medications do you think these people need after they have a sex change but you have veterans in this company country you have old people Elderly people, you have disabled people that can't get pain medication because they want to blame it all on old people, but they'll cut your child's off. So when our Republican colleagues allege that gender-affirming care raises particular dangers or due process issues, that is fear-mongering at its worst. Yes, it's fear-mongering because everybody should be fearful. Oh my God. Fear-mongering? Protecting children is now considered fear-mongering. This is where we're at in America. Picking on already vulnerable kids in order to stir up chaos that they hope to ride to success at the ballot box. No matter. Well, let's just turn this around. These doctors see vulnerable children. 
and they ride their privates right to the bank. Tell me that's not true. Tell me that's not true. They're how deceitful or dangerous those claims are. As a mother of three, I certainly never found myself at my children's pediatric appointments wishing for medical advice from the House Judiciary Committee. And I cannot believe a mother of three would be up there pushing this. I cannot believe that. What kind of mother does that? As a member of Congress, I'm appalled by the weaponization of our legislative process to inject politicians into the person. I'm appalled at the weaponization of the medical care in this country. Personal medical decisions of our constituents' lives. I strongly oppose. My son has been begging for his ear to be fixed for five years. No, we just get told, can't see nothing, nothing wrong. Well, what, you know, and now the doctor says, well, we'll try a procedure. And what does insurance do? Because my son is on um, state care because he's disabled. They don't want to pay for it. Oppose any effort to impose ultra-conservative political or religious views on the medical decisions of American families. And I will be here on the other side. Screaming from the rooftops, leave the kids alone. Whether on matters of reproductive health care or, or parental decisions to seek gender affirming care for a transgender child. I know that Americans can be trusted to make their own health care decisions without politicians invading their doctor's office. Oh my God. Look at the psychologists we got in this country now. They're the ones telling the parents what to think and the doctors. Parents, Follow your gut instinct. Follow your gut instinct. If your kid is being a pain in the ass because they want to be the opposite sex, you're just going to have to figure out something else to do. Sex changing is not the way. It's not the answer. I know there's a lot of these men saying they loved it, but that's different. They did it when they were an adult. We're talking about children. And I believe parents and doctors when they say that gender affirming care has changed children's lives for the better and in many cases even saved those lives. Parents like the mother of a trans teen from Ohio, who shared her family's story with the committee. She told us that because her 17-year-old trans daughter had access to evidence-based, medically necessary, gender-affirming care, puberty was just another phase of a normal and healthy adolescence. Puberty is now considered a disease, I guess. She said, and I quote, Forcing her to go through the wrong puberty and seeing the impact on her body. That's not forcing. It's doing what your body naturally wants to do. And her mental health would have been agonizing for all of us. I don't understand why we would allow politicians to make medical decisions for our children. The same reason we allow them to make our medical decisions for our old people in pain. She's right. Banning access to gender affirming care would violate parents due process rights and the federal courts agree they agree that banning gender affirming care for minors violates constitutionally protected parental rights but by the same token if you tell them no you have no more parental rights so you actually you have no which way to go and that politicians should stay out of those decisions i want to close by I agree. Politicians should stay out of this. And they are the ones that's making it political. It should never even be a thing. It should be a very rare, rare, rare thing for the children that actually do have gender dysphoria. Finding my colleagues how much their words matter. By endorsing falsehoods and bullying tactics, members of Congress are helping to promote a culture of discrimination that has increased violence against trans kids and their parents. Sim no. No, they're trying to save the children. Like I say, I was liberal before this. I didn't care if guys want to be trans. Whatever, whatever floats their boat, as long as they're doing their thing, whatever. But it's gone too far. And I will speak from the rooftops as long as I can too, Mrs. Uh, whatever your name is. Medical political opportunists should not be allowed to use the megaphone of the House Judiciary Committee to promote cruelty and disinformation. They're using it for doctors. They're training doctors to give kids sex changes. That is way worse. The government is there. This is the way I've always thought. The government is there. The people that want to 
do that. They're up in, up in, you know, government. They're there to help protect the rest of us. And I don't feel like they're there to protect us at all anymore. They're there to, for the lobbyist. Let me tell you, this trans activist, they have a lot of money behind them. A lot. That's why we have to use our voices, because I don't think any of us have as much money as they have if you put all our money together. We probably don't even have as much as one of them rich people does. Particularly when we know that it invites discrimination and abuse of trans children and their families. What do they think these kids are going to go through? Um... Look at the older ones. They're crying. They're crying about discrimination. Blah blah blah. Well, if you have somebody that looks like a boy and is acting, I don't even know. I don't even know. Let's just go on. I must object to this callous and reckless use of this committee's time. And with that, I yield back. I now recognize the ranking member of the full committee, Mr. Nadler, for an opening statement, if he wishes. Okay, that's as far as I've gotten on this. Uh, program it's two hours two hours and ten minutes i'll probably put it on in the background while i'm doing stuff and when i hear something else that piques my interest uh i might go over this a little bit more i might go over the little other videos a little bit more there's just so much stuff to untangle from this they've really got this country gaslit brainwashed to uh destroy their own children tell me what is so much different than this than the mayans that threw their kids off that tall tower thing uh, you know, I guess they're not dead, but actually they are because who they were is dead. Their life is completely not the same as, you know, it would have been if they stayed their own sex. So in my uh, quest to figure out what in the heck is happening, and how do we get to this point, I'm going to go ahead and close this video now. Uh, click the like button if you've made it this far. And I hope this recording came out better. I've got a new recording set up. So uh, take care and... Uh, you know, don't give up. Protect your children, mothers. Protect your children, fathers. These are your sons and daughters. Don't let the uh, medical establishment uh, mutilate them for money. Because I don't think in 10 years uh, it's going to be so nice. Even Dr. Blair said, it's all an experiment. We'll see in 10 years. I don't think people should be taking that chance with their children. I don't. All right. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.